Well, today we're going to talk about intuitively decorating our pinch pods. We are going to learn in detail about slip decoration in exercise number two next week, but today we just want to finish off our pods, uh, try out our slips, and then um, we'll be done with this process. Um, so you're going to need your slips, uh, a paintbrush. The one I gave you is great. It's really versatile, but you can also pick up smaller paintbrushes that will give you a little more detail. This kind of fluffy type of brush is really good for working with slip, um, but you can try different types of brushes. Um, and then you're going to want your pots, and they need to be leather hard or more wet, so not drier than leather hard. Slip is essentially liquid clay that has had a colorant mixed into it, and so um, clay shrinks as it dries and so if your clay is too dry already when you put the slip on they'll shrink at different rates and your slip will crack off um, so that's a good troubleshooting tip you know you've gone um, a little too dry if you see your slip cracking off the slips look a little different than they will once they're fired and they have a clear glaze put on them so to give you an idea of what they'll look like i've got some test tiles here so this um is something like what your pots will look like. This is the white, blue, uh, I call this brown, and black. Here's another sample with white, yellow, brown, blue, and black. Here's one more sample and a preview of what we're going to be doing next week. To talk about leather hard. Leather hard is kind of a variety of stages of dryness and they can kind of go from soft leather hard to hard leather hard and everything in between. So that's a term that you'll hear me throw around sometimes. Um, but basically how do you know if something is leather hard versus bone dry? So this pot is I would say hard leather hard. So if I make an impression, I can't make an impression with my finger if I poke it right I, I really can't at all which is pretty cool um, but if I scratch it I can still see that I'm making an impression versus something that is bone dry where I can only make scratches or scrape away clay for example right that is bone dry of course the color looks different these are the same clays you can see the difference in color okay let's get started talking about different stages of clay so this is bone dry this is too dry to work with this is leather hard and then this is very soft it's not even in the leather hard stage yet so I've got some slip here and when I put it on here, watch how quickly it dries. And that's because the clay is absorbing the water. So you can almost, you can absolutely see it drying. So this clay is a little too dry. Um, this slip is in, in danger of cracking off. This piece, which is leather hard, you still get a bit of that drying it's not as immediate, but you see you get a pretty good co pretty good coverage. The different colors will be slightly different, um, but that's because some of the water is being absorbed by the clay. And then with this soft piece, um, you can see if I do two strokes, you start to lose some of the color. It picks it up, and that's because this clay is wetter. It's not um, absorbing. The water from the slip so it's uh, easier to pick it back up with the brush. This is a no-no because we can run into problems when we fire. This is not uh, against the rules but it's a little less efficient whereas with the leather hard clay we're gonna get the best coverage um, and so this is a nice stage to do slip decoration at. Okay so what do I mean by intuitive decorating. What I mean is just go ahead and play with some of the colors that you have and play with your pinch pots at different wetnesses so you can kind of find where um, application makes the most sense. Um, and again, in week three, exercise two, we're gonna learn uh, in more detail about this process. 
Um, but yeah, so for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just put some blue slip on here. Notice on your pots of slip, uh, well, not on mine, but on yours, I have the color written on the top and on the, the tub itself, and that's because some of these look kind of similar, um, especially black and brown. But anyway, I'm gonna just put some decoration on here just for funsies. Let me clean off my brush. And I'm gonna dry off my brush because I want slip only, no water. I'm going to try to get some good coverage here. So again, this pot is leather hard. With slip, what you see is what you get. So if you see a lot of texture or if you see a lot of clay coming through, like on this pot that I did that was too wet, you're gonna see that when it's fired. So as you can see on this leather hard pot, I pretty easily got some good coverage. Again, we'll talk in more detail next week. Um, but yeah, there we go. I made the inside of the pot brown. This is that iron oxide. And I'm gonna leave the outside of the pot just regular clay colored. All right, let's see, let's do something more interesting with this one. I'm just gonna make some stripes. And as I mentioned, you can get different brushes. Um, you can actually be pretty precise with this brush if you want to, um, but you can also get different brushes that are more precise. And you can also be kind of um, rustic or uh, organic with this brush. That is um, part of slip design. Uh, I'm gonna add a different color to this one. Now that this is dried a bit, I can definitely add some color on top. And as you can see, they will layer on top of each other. If they're both wet, they will mix together and get muddy. You can try mixing slips together, but these are colored with raw metal oxides. Um, so they don't really mix together the way paint does, but you're welcome to try anything in this intuitive decoration process. Um, for something like my rattle, I might want a slightly more um, detailed brush, but it's definitely not required. But let's see here. Let's give him some blue ears. If I notice that a part of my pot is on the wetter side, I can let that dry and come back in with another layer. So I can still see clay through that slip. So I'll come back a little later. I give him some blue feet too. And you're welcome to be as precise as you want, but these are just uh, for kind of testing, so don't sweat it too much. All right, let me go back in with some blue. And as you can see with that second coat, it's more opaque. If it was still too wet, I just really wouldn't be getting any opaqueness. And then the answer in that case is just to wait a little longer. I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm gonna give this kitty cat a kind of calico thing. Oops. And I'm just trying not to touch. Let's give him some stripes kitty stripes. Okay, so um, I'm going to come back in with a little bit of yellow and give him a little more calico stripes. All right, I'm going to add a little more detail with the smaller brush. So for my cat's eyes, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in there. And 
on the outside, I'm going to put some black. some black in this carving. And on the nose. Okay. I'm put a little bit of yellow on here. that we're going to talk more about next week but that we can just do a little bit of intuitive playing with this time is scratching into our slip once we've put it on. Um, we'll learn more about Scraffito next week but um, we can scratch through the clay to reveal the, the actual clay color and we can use our ribbon tools to see it even better. So there you go. And that can be turned into really interesting things. So that could be some kind of texture. So I can emphasize the line that this red creates by drawing around it. When we do this in leather hard clay, we will get these little crumbles or boogers. Um, those are both technical terms. A little bit we can blow them away, but something we can do is actually wait for this to be completely dry and then use a dry paintbrush to brush them away. Right now, when the clay has still moisture in it, we can run the risk of this turning into a like a smear. So we'll just leave that for right now. Um, but yeah, we can definitely play with different things. So that is just some playing. Again, we'll go into more detail with this next week. A couple quick notes about slip. Um, your slip is clay mixed with water and it can lose a little bit of moisture over time. You want it to be kind of like thick cream um, and like not quite pancake batter consistency. You can add water if it starts to get thicker than that. I always add the tiniest amount at a time because sometimes um, because it is easy to add too much and it's very hard to take moisture away. It's much easier to add it. A quick note on these um, slip colors and your clothes. Um, generally ceramic materials are not, they're not great for clothes because they are basically ground up rocks and water. So they can be a little hard on our clothes. They don't generally stain a lot, though I have seen occasionally the red or the, um, sorry, the brown or the black slip. Because there's a lot of colorant, um, it can sort of stay on your clothes. It will probably come out eventually, but as a general rule, just wear clothes that you're not worried about getting dirty but that is all I mean by intuitive decorating just try a few things do some experiments um, generally if you want to try to mix a color um, or whatever do it outside of your main tubs of slips so that they don't get contaminated and 
Once you've slip decorated your pinch pots, then you can let them dry completely. Um, we'll drop those off in week three uh, on your regular studio day, and then I'll get them fired and clear glazed so you can see what they look like when they're done and the colors are their true color.